Congressman and Marine veteran Seth Moulton here with us in New York. Uh, so, Congressman, there's been this big question that uh, some people have asked, was it worth it? And I've heard from veteran friends who've wondered the same thing from, from time to time. Were the last two decades worth it as you watch the way we're leaving that country and watching more Americans die yesterday, 13 of them and 18 injured? Um, as you pause to think about it, as you pause to think about what you've seen on the ground just in the last few days, what are your thoughts about the last two decades? Well, I'm not going to sit here and try to argue that it was worth it. The, the hardest question that I ever got as a, as a young 20-something Marine officer in Iraq was, hey, sir, why are we here? It was a haunting question. And, and, and the, the only good answer I could come up with was, so no one has to be here in our place. Hmm. And that's not an adequate answer. It's true. And I, and I think that applies to those Marines who are out there today. You know, we can debate for a long time how they got into that place. But when I say I've never been prouder to be an American, it's because these young men and women are out there willing to do it for all the rest of us. And for these, and for these Afghan kids, you know, when you see a U.S. Marine grab a little girl by the hand that reminds you of your own daughter, that, that's that's what America is all about. Mm -hmm. They represent the absolute best of America. And we've seen so many counts. images in the last couple of weeks of United States Marine service members holding Afghan children, carrying them over the wall. Uh, to freedom and hopefully to a better life. And that's exactly the kind of honor and the selflessness and the sacrifice, sadly, that we saw yesterday. Congressman Mike Barnacles here with a question for you, Mike. Congressman, as we sit here uh, today, uh, 13 Marines are on the way to Dover Air Force Base. Casualty officers are knocking at the doors of their homes. And strangely enough, impossibly enough, the miracle continues because those Marines, those dead Marines, have been replaced by other Marines who are doing the same thing today that cost those 13 their lives two days ago. So my question to you is, we live in a country with no draft. The Marines you spoke of just a few seconds ago in Iraq, the Marines and the Airborne who are there at uh, KIA, Kabul Airport, are there because they volunteered to be there. You were on the ground for a very brief period of time a few days ago. So did that change your view of what's going on? What did you learn? Did it change anything in your thinking about what's going on? It changed a lot, Mike, but let's just start with the fact that Washington put them in this place, put them in this impossible place, in this possible situation with a nearly impossible mission. And yet the Marines on the ground are so committed to saving these Afghan friends because they know that America made them a promise that they want to stay there as long as it takes. You wouldn't believe how many Marines said, sir, we got to find a way to extend this deadline so that we can keep doing this because there's more people we can save. That's how committed they are. And you're right. As soon as those Marines were killed, there are other Marines who said, send me out there. Let me go. I'll go next. One of the most important things that I learned from being there, though, was that we can't extend this deadline because we have to bring people home after we leave. And without getting into the details of the negotiations, that's not a tenable position if we stay beyond August 31st. We've tried to negotiate that with the Taliban, and it's not going to work. We've put ourselves, people in Washington have put these troops in a place where they need the Taliban's help. I learned that one of the most difficult things the organizers of this evacuation on the ground are dealing with is actually members of Congress and members of the administration who are beating down their doors trying to get their particular friends out. Mm. That's one of the things distracting them from the mission because there's been no system, no plan. I mean, I've been trying to, we have a list of about 2,000 Afghans just in my office. 
that we've been trying to get out. And one night last week, I stayed up all night just focused on four families, just four families sending hundreds and hundreds of texts and WhatsApp messages between troops I happen to know on the ground and these families trying to convince the parents, I know your kids are starving and they're crying. Stay a little bit longer because there's someone who's coming to get you, trying to get there. And at the end of that night, I'd saved one, one out of four families. But when I saw a picture of them on the other side of the gate, a, a heroic journalist, his wife, and, and, and two little girls about the same age as mine, I said, you know what? It was worth it. And if I can get on a plane and figure out how to save a few more, better bet I'll do that. Congressman, what does that process look like right now? If you're a family in Kabul or way outside Kabul, which is a whole other uh, situation, what does it look like right now? How do you get to the airport? How many checkpoints are you going through? The, fam the four families you're talking about, what does that process look like? It, it looks chaotic. Is it as chaotic as it seems? It looks hopeless to a lot of people to get through all those checkpoints, especially if you are trying to pass through the Taliban and have worked with America sometime over the last 20 years. What is, you say there's no plan in place, and sadly that's true. So what is the process as someone like you tries to get a family to safety? Well, let me describe it for a family that I know well. They were out in a city well outside of Kabul. And first they had to make the decision to whether to even leave their house, to travel all these roads with Taliban checkpoints, knowing that they were on the target list to get to Kabul. And I convinced them, I don't know, you could die in the way, but my instinct is go, try to get to the airport. So they planned to leave in the morning. That night, the Taliban came to their house and made them serve dinner to them. Mm. So this family is literally making dinner for Taliban soldiers before they leave the next morning to try to escape them. They got to Kabul. They somehow made it to the airport by showing some semblance of paperwork that convinced the Taliban that we qualify to get out. And then they sat for days at the airport gate without food and water, watching their kids practically wither in the sun. While I was on the phone with them trying to convince them, stay a little longer because I've got someone who can come. And we finally got a heroic airman to come and literally pull them over the wall in the middle of the night because I sh showed them exactly with pictures and grids where this family was and carried them to safety. Now they're in a refugee camp. Now they're in a refugee camp where they still don't have enough food and water. We gotta fix that problem next. So you literally reached out to someone you knew, an active duty service member and said, here's where these people are. That's not a process, that's a favor for a, a buddy and pulled them over the wall? Yeah. That's the only reason this, this one family is safe. And we've been watching as you've been talking, the evacuation continue, the work of the United States military goes on flight after flight today, 3.41 in the afternoon, despite the trauma, the United States military, the tragedy, the horror suffered yesterday, 13 service members killed, 18 injured. The work continues. Congressman, I know you have to get back to work. We're so grateful for your service to the country and so grateful that you have given us witness to what's happening on the ground and for the work you continue to do. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you, Willie. Nice to see you. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.